Three Georgia County jail guards are being sued for allegedly standing by while one of their colleagues appeared to choke a restrained inmate. The lawsuit claims officers, uh, these, these, these three officers, first of all, did nothing to stop 60-year-old, uh, first of all, to stop uh, the officer from choking 37-year-old Tremar Harris, uh, who was restrained in a chair. Joining me now is uh, civil rights attorney Harry Daniels. Uh, Harry, this is the, we're showing the video as we speak uh, what actually took place. place. So uh, your client is sitting in this chair. And first of all, why was he restrained? Well, when he was restrained, uh, they felt like he was acting out and they want to restrain uh, from uh, the service he was called. So it's because he was out of jail. So essentially, I right. put him in a restraint chair. Uh, and I think he's supposed to be in a restraint chair. Okay, so he was restrained in the chair. Can you hear me, uh, yeah, I can hear you, uh, Harry. And then all of a sudden, they come in and they start choking him with a chain? Yeah, yeah, they come in. Uh, at some point, he was able to free his right arm. Uh, then you can see the camera. Actually, hold, hold tight one second, Harry. Hold tight one second. Harry, hold tight one second. I know you're on a plane. Guys, do this here. He's, a video is not working. So here's the piece. Get him on audio, and then we simply have him via audio. Let's do that. So this video is not working. Let's do him on FaceTime audio, and then we can chat with him. So again, I want us to roll the video from the top. Roll the video from the top. And so uh, here you see uh, this young man, uh, uh, Tremar Harris. Uh, so you see him there uh, in uh, the chair. Uh, there are four officers uh, who are there. And then all of a sudden you see one of them putting a chain around his neck. And then he pulls on the chain. That makes no sense whatsoever. We're going to try to get Harry again uh, uh, on audio. Uh, and so uh, I have my panel here, of course, Robert Patillo. Uh, he, of course, hosts People, Passion, Politics, News and Talk, 1380 WAOK out of Atlanta, who's also running for a judicial position there. Uh, also, Rebecca Carruthers, Vice President of Fair Election Center of Washington, D.C., uh, and Gavin Reynolds, contributor with The Root, and former speechwriter for Vice President Kamala Harris uh, out of uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Um, you know, we see numerous stories like this, Robert, where we have these jailers who do unconscionable things. In fact, um, you know, the Department of Justice has put a number of wardens, wardens and jailers, uh, put them in prison for their actions. Uh, and we have seen a lot of these stories out of Georgia. Uh, you're absolutely correct. And in that video, if you look very sh quickly at the beginning, uh, the the first jailer who turns around, you'll see a skull uh, symbol with a it seems like a vertical American flag on the back of it. You see it right there, almost a Jason mask skull with the vertical American flag on there. That is a symbol that is very associated with white supremacist organizations. You'll see that often at Proud Boys rallies. You'll see that often at the uh, the Stop the Steal rallies. Those sorts of rallies. So we have to also talk about the fact that we have these white supremacist organizations that have infiltrated law enforcement and in many ways uh, have become part and parcel of, uh, of law enforcement leadership in this country. Uh, a few, probably about six years ago, we interviewed the Ku Klux Klan on our show. Um, the international co of the Klondike Ku Klux Klan came on, Gene Wolfe, and he talked about the fact that they realized they could no longer operate the way that they had in the past. They could no longer wear the sheets and all those things, but they understood that they could infest our judiciary. They could infest law enforcement. They can infest our military. And we have to understand that these people are in positions of power around the country, and they are using their positions to uh, uh, to harm and to belittle and to trample on the rights of African Americans. And as we talk a lot about, we have to do something about reforming our jail system in this country. People are spending entirely too much time behind bars before they are even convicted of crimes. People are spending entirely too much time waiting on trial, waiting on bond. Uh, and because of this, it gives these jailers the opportunity to violate the fundamental human rights that these people are involved in. I'm glad my friend Harry uh, is on this case, and I'm glad we now have video cameras in many of these courthouses and jails and court uh, uh, and detention facilities around the country because this ha has been happening for decades. It's only now that we have cameras that people actually believe the, um, the inmates when these things take place, and it's important that we need to provide justice for these individuals. You know, um, I'm going to pull this story up here, Rebecca. Uh, the a story was announced uh, just the other day uh, that a federal prison in California is being closed. 
like literally shut down because of sexual assaults of female inmates. Uh, and I mean, that, tell you, that tells you right there how shameful this is, um, that they have so many rapes that they're going to shut the prison down. Um, and this prison is, um, let's see here, it's, uh, 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 let's see here, I think it's FCI uh, D Dublin. Again, I'm pulling this story up one second right here. Yeah, FCI Dublin. This has been notorious, and I'm trying to understand how, how do you not stop that? How do you, and, and that's on a federal level, and it's worse. You have worse uh, actors on the state level, and again, DOJ has been, uh, you know, doing as much as they can, but where are these state legislators, these county commissioners, uh, who's supposed to oversee these jails? The criminal legal system in this country is complicit with human rights violations, full stop. We're seeing it, whether it's our jail systems, whether it's our federal prison systems or our state prison systems. We're also seeing this extended to law enforcement. Oftentimes we hear a pushback that, oh, it's just a few bad apples. It is very apparent that these are systemic issues that must be addressed. And if the United States is unable, unwilling to address these issues from coast to coast, then maybe we need to bring in international tribunals um, to help correct to these human rights violations that are happening um, in this country. And also, it is disproportionately impacting people of color, specifically black people in this country. And right now, we're simply, we're, 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 we still have people who tell us that these are just one-offs, that these things um, aren't happening across the board. But every, every night on this show, you know, we run stories about something that's happening with the criminal legal system and this detrimental impact on black folks in this country. Uh, uh, Gavin, this took place in Applin County uh, in Georgia. Go to my iPad, but this is what I'm talking about. This is from uh, the Associated Press. The, the beleaguered Federal Bureau of Prisons said Monday it will close a women's prison in California known as the Rape Club despite attempts to reform the trouble facility after an Associated Press investigation exposed rampant staff on inmate sexual abuse. Uh, Bureau of Prisons Director Colette Peters said in a statement to the AEP that the agency had, quote, taken unprecedented steps and provided a tremendous amount of resources to address culture, recruitment and retention, aging infrastructure and most critical employee misconduct. Despite these steps and resources, we have determined that FCI Dublin is not meeting expected standards and that the best course of action is to close the facility. This decision is being made after ongoing evaluation of the effectiveness of those unprecedented steps and additional resources. Um, here's nowhere in the statement. We're going to ensure that any person who works at that prison does not get hired anywhere else. I mean, you can sit here and talk about all this sort of stuff. These are individuals who flat out believe, oh, we can sexually abuse women uh, without any uh, 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 repercussion whatsoever. And I'm going to tell you the best way, if you truly want to uh, slow down or stop these things, and we said the same thing about cops, start putting their asses in prison. Start indicting and convicting them for sexual assault and rape and give them prison time. And then you say, anybody else here? Anybody else here want to sexually assault a woman? We go, we go indict your ass and we go convict your ass. To me, that's what you do. So many times the people who are perpetrating these crimes against these incarcerated individuals, like Robert said, in many cases who have not even yet had their day in court, they do what they do hiding behind the badge, hiding behind the law. And there's so much rot in the system that it's not even just, you know, these uh, wardens and people who work within the prisons, but it's also those who are elsewhere in the criminal legal system, such that in many cases, you might try to prosecute those individuals, but because of the rot and the corruption elsewhere in the system, those efforts go in vain. And I appreciate you, um, Roland and, and my other panelists for sort of expanding this out because this goes so far beyond this one instance. And Robert is right. It's only because we thankfully have this on tape that we're actually you know, able to deal with the situation. But elsewhere in Georgia, 
you know, this is not just happening in this county where this where this took place. You look at Metro Atlanta. I was reading three inmates have died in five days in Metro Atlanta jails. We have to talk about what's going on in our jails. And until we do, people in our jails and our prisons will continue to be assaulted, continue to be, um, uh, uh, you know, just treated in absolutely reprehensible ways. And in some cases, even losing their lives when what they should be doing is getting their day in court, getting their fair shot at justice, which is too often denied. And so, you know, I think oftentimes we tend to focus on private prisons and sort of other very clear and obvious uh, villains in our criminal legal system. But we have to recognize that the rot and I, and I, uh, you know, I, I commend the Biden administration who uh, has announced that they're no longer going to renew any contracts with with private prisons at the federal level. But that's such a small piece of the overall system of the overall system. This rot is so uh, pervasive. And and so I hope, you know, in this case, the judge who presides over, you know, this trial against those officers uh, uh, vindicates uh, the individual who is victimized in this situation and that, Roland, like you said, we take steps to make sure that the law enforcement officials who uh, have sworn oaths to protect the people in these situations uh, live up to their oath. And if they not and if they don't, you know, we put them on the other side of the bars. Let's, and Roland, let's just be clear here, um, Rebecca. The problem that we have when it comes to jails and prisons, the public says, we don't care, they're animals. That's the problem. They start with the mindset that these people are incorrigible and they are animals, and so therefore they can be treated any way they want to. When we, when we dehumanize people behind bars, uh, th this is what leads to this particular issue, because you have um, it, because it's now expected that those who are incarcerated are behaving like animals. But guess what? Those who are there um, at to serve as guards within prisons, they are just as incarcerated as well. Like it's it's a um, it, it, it's a, a a mindset. They begin to act like animals, and that's what people have to understand when you listen to a lot of. Um, advocates for criminal legal system reform, they will let you know that institutionalization happens to both sides. It happens to the inmates, and it ha happens to those who are guarding the inmates. And if we don't um, change the way we view people behind bars, then this issue is going to continue to happen. Because bottom line, we have to figure out, are we trying to punish people or are we trying to reform people? If we're trying to reform people, that means we have to keep them um, engaged as an active citizenry. And if we try to treat them as animals, then that means we're throwing them away. And in this country, we're saying that, hey, we're not going to give you disproportionate, um, you're not going to be punished disproportionately to your crimes. So if someone is in prison um, for stealing cars, should they then be denied their humanity? And so that's the question that as uh, Americans, we have to figure out what is it that we want exactly in our criminal legal system? Because I would tell you, every other country in the world, they don't have these same problems that the United States has. They also aren't incarcerating people at the rates that the United States is. They also don't have um, the amount of crime happening um, in other countries as well. So there's something the United States States is doing that is failing and is causing these human rights violations. Robert. And, and, and Roland, on that point, I, I remind I want people to look up the Supreme Court case, Farmer uh, Farmer v. Brennan from 1994. Uh, the reason that case is important is one of Clarence Thomas's first cases on the court uh, where he ruled that an uh, inmate who had been raped did not have an Eighth Amendment violation. He argued that it should be expected and to be part of the sentence to be abused in prisons. And basically, you forfeit your constitutional and human rights um, by being incarcerated. This has been, been influenced influential on police brutality cases, on prison brutality cases for nearly 30 years. When we're talking about our, our wonderful Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, has been supported by the, uh, the, uh, the prison industrial complex for uh, decades. The only way that we fix this is by changing Supreme Court precedents so that we can actually prosecute and go after these jailers, they go after the individuals who commit these acts. And then I, I also, for the, uh, for the viewers, there's a line between prison and jail. 
Prison is where you go after you've been convicted of a crime. Jail is where you are at while you are awaiting trial. When people are abused in the jails of America, those are not criminals. Those are not felons. Those are people who are awaiting trial. They are being punished in such a way that uh, uh, that often goes beyond the sentence. I've had people who have been locked up in the Fulton County Jail for five, six, seven years awaiting trial. As was just mentioned, we've had over a dozen deaths in the Fulton County jail in the last year and a half. Gwinnett County, um, just outside of Atlanta, has had over a dozen deaths in the last uh, year or so uh, for people awaiting trial. We had one person eaten by bed bugs to death. I had to go on the news in Iran and explain what happened to someone who was eaten by bed bugs in Fulton County Jail. This is because we have a criminal justice system that locks up poor people, and the people who don't have the same money as some of these celebrities we see going to court every day, they stay in custody for sometimes a half decade or more, longer than the actual sentence would have been if they had been convicted of the crime, and then they are scarred and destroyed for life. It's like being abducted for, uh, by aliens. Your car is gone. Your apartment is gone. Your credit score is destroyed. Your utilities mm -hmm. are turned off. Your life is ruined whether you are convicted or not, and if we do not reform the criminal justice system from the inside out, we can no longer call ourselves a first world democracy. Uh, we uh, start falling into the star chamber that you'll see during the medieval era, where we are no longer a nation of laws. We are a nation uh, of anarchy, and that's what we're uh, quick hurtling towards. Uh, and, and given, bottom line is this here, um, when you talk about this issue, uh, uh, the, the, the only deterrence uh, is these folks got to go. Back to my iPad. Uh, the, when the Bureau of Prisons announced this decision, uh, just 10 days earlier, just 10 days earlier, uh, a federal judge announced uh, a special master to oversee the prison. Uh, the Associated Press had uh, a, uh, an investigation that details uh, decades-long mismanagement and abuse at the prison. Now, here's what's interesting. When you go down this particular, first of all, the prison is located 21 miles east of Oakland. If everybody who's watching, and I understand, this is separate from uh, the case that Harry Daniels is talking about, but I'm putting them together because it speaks to the abuse of inmates. 605 inmates in this prison. You had some whistleblowers involved here who said they were, how they were being sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, uh, other types of abuse, medical treatment as well. But here's what's crazy to me right here. It says the women currently housed at the prison will be transferred to other facilities and no employees will lose their jobs. I I'm confused. If you can't fix the problem, if they're clearly are not listing who, why are they keeping their jobs? Now, what you had here was, you had in this same place, you had several people uh, who were prosecuted. Since 2001, back to about 2021, eight FCI Dublin employees have been charged with sexually abusing inmates. Five have pleaded guilty, two were convicted at trial, including the former warden, Ray Garcia, another case is pending. Okay, Gavin, th th this is where I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Eight? Eight. Decades of abuse, decades of mismanagement, and no employees will lose their jobs. So, um, what the hell? I think what this just shows us, what this illustrates is that in this country, it's harder to fire and prosecute federal officials who can hide behind, you know, their federal protections than it is to lock up poor black people. We see that time and time again. And I want to go back to what Rebecca said, which I think was such an astute point about how this system that we've created in this country to lock up poor black people has infested and taken over the minds of those who are working in those prisons. And it reminds me of a quote from Toni Morrison in her Nobel Prize winning book, Beloved. She was describing slavery, but she described slavery as a jungle that white folks had planted, that grew and that spread until it invaded the whites who themselves had made it. And it made them bloody and silly and worse than they ever wanted to be. And she said that the screaming baboon lived under their own white skin and the red gums were their own. And we know that our current system of mass incarceration is but a continuation of slavery in this country. And so we shouldn't be surprised I think uh, Toni Morrison was aptly describing the current situation that we have here. It's just time that we recognize that. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. 
This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits. 